Jesus. Oh, glory to God. He's a mighty good God. Thank you, Lord. I'm so thankful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Great job, woman of God. Let us go back to the book of Numbers, the 14th chapter, continuing with the rebellion of the people. Numbers 14, verses 7 through 12. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for God just speaking your word in this place. Let us hear God. Let us hearken. Let us understand what your spirit is saying unto the church. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Numbers 14 and 7 says, And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will ye provoke this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have showed among them? I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they rebellion of the people hallelujah you may be seated last week the lesson reveals how the spies were commanded to go out and to inspect the land and now this week they're coming back with a good report they come back and give a good report of the land and says if the lord delights in us then he will bring us into this land in other words uh, joshua and caleb is telling Israel, God desires to give you what he says, but there are going to be some stipulations and some requirements and some things that you're going to have to do. God desires to give us uh, the promises he has for us, but he has to still delight in us. And there were some cans and some cannot, some do's and some don'ts. And Joshua and Caleb apparently were the only people that understood the promises were real. The promises are yea and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, but you have to step up to the level of what God is calling you to in order for him to release those things for you. The Bible says that, amen, they encouraged Joshua and Caleb, encouraged them, and they warned them all at the same time. Like every time we come into this sanctuary, the preacher is preaching, the teacher is teaching, we get a word of encouragement, uh, and we should also get a word that should compel us, uh, hallelujah, to, to do right by God. Luke 12 and 32 says, fear not, little Little flock, it is our Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The kingdom contains the promises of God. And Joshua and Caleb was telling them, you cannot possess the kingdom promises without the king. You got to have his help. You got to have the, the king's help, his strength, and his guidance. Because there were other occupants, there were other giants, there were other people in the land that God hadn't promised them uh, to be there, but they were occupying the land. And Israel could see God's vision because they could only see the presence of those uh, that were around them. Uh, and sometimes we miss the moment of God because we can see the frustration of our enemy rather than we see the focus of, of the see the plan and the promises of God. So we miss seeing what God is trying to do uh, through his eyes because we're looking through a lens uh, of what's going on through our eyes. Uh, hallelujah. But tell somebody your eyes will deceive you. Uh, you got to keep your mind stayed up on Jesus uh, you got to stay focused in the presence of all the haters and the failures uh, that are around you. Proverbs 21 and 2 says, uh, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, uh, but the Lord pondereth his heart. Uh, Joshua and Caleb were simply trying to get Israel to change their view from what, it, what they were seeing in front of them. Uh, sometimes even though it may be real, uh, it's still not factual because the fact of the matter was uh, God was trying to get them into a place uh, that he had promised them. Uh, 
one of the consequences of disobedience is it clouds your vision. You cannot, not only did Joshua and Caleb uh, try to encourage them that you need the king in order to possess the kingdom, uh, you can also you cannot have unbelief. Unbelief shows that you deny the power of God. And the Bible says that a double-minded man can receive anything from the Lord. James 1, 6 through 8 says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. And because God is not going to contradict his word, he's going to implement every aspect of his word. He's, because they were now wavering, Brother Ricardo, in their thoughts, God can't bring the blessings into their life. You got to be sure. You got to be steady. You got to be stable. This is how you get God to delight in you. For the Bible says, ask in faith, not nothing wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss for let not that man think it that he shall receive anything of the Lord a double minded man is unstable in all his ways God knows that when you're unstable you won't treat his blessings right when your mind is not right it's hard now the Bible says that he reigns on the just and the unjust and we are in a generation where people are confused and confounded because they think just because I'm blessed and I ain't doing right that God don't see what I'm doing but God sees the spirit spirit behind a, a double-minded man. Unbelief doesn't move God. Faith pleases him, pleases him and belief moves him. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Mark 9 and 23 the Bible says, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believe. And again God won't contradict his word so because if you don't if you do believe he's showing you what scripture can do so because Israel weren't really believing they were uh, confounded to what they had already seen God can really move and because he says I can do all things that are possible to them that believe I can't operate in your unbelief God don't cross examine his word this is why in the Bible both times when Peter was getting ready to do a miracle and when Jesus Jesus was getting ready to do a miracle they put everybody out that wasn't believing God right when God is taking you into a place uh, and to the promises of God uh, you have to eliminate the people or the circle around you uh, that are not like minded uh, that are not thinking on God's thoughts with you uh, that are not in agreement with you uh, I don't care hallelujah how long uh, you've been in the field uh, if your mind is not on Jesus uh, if we can't touch and agree with the word that God has uh, I Tell somebody you got to leave the room. You got to escape because uh, what God is trying to do, uh, everybody got to be on one accord. Uh, everybody got to be in unity. Uh, everybody got to be in peace. Uh, hallelujah. And you're going to have a people. You're going to have an enemy. You're going to have a complainer that's not with you but uh, against you. Uh, but it don't matter. God still has the word uh, that he has spoken over you. Uh, and rebellious is an attack from the enemy. Uh, but the Bible says, uh, hallelujah, that people that are repentant minister Williams uh, have an open portal uh, for God to take them through uh, if you got to leave some people behind uh, tell somebody like Felicia said don't you look back uh, know that you've done your part uh, know that you've done your do uh, the Bible says hallelujah that Joshua and Caleb well, I'm saying Joshua and Caleb we're trying to get them to understand that this is what God has said I know what you see but Penny this is what God has said and we get so caught up in what we see uh, that we can't walk into what God has said. They needed to be in a position uh, for God to delight in them. The Bible says in Psalms 1 and 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. So by contrast, when you delight in God, you usher in the spirit for God to delight in you because re uh, obedience is the only thing that pleases God. Now we talked about God, Joshua said, you got to get God to delight in you. Moses gives them specific instructions on how to get the Lord to delight in them. He tells them, do not 
rebel, then he tells them, uh, do not fear the people of the land. Verse 9 says, only rebel not against the Lord. The word rebel means uh, to defy authority. It means to oppose uh, or one who is in opposition against an established government. Uh, God is the greatest authority. Uh, a rejection to the word of God uh, is simply rebellion. Uh, 1 Samuel 15 and 23 says, for rebellion uh, is as the sin of witchcraft. Uh, you know, some people, they can know the right way. Uh, we can know the right thing to do. Uh, we can know order. We can know establishment. Uh, and we still got a mind uh, to do it the way we want to do it. We still got a spirit uh, to say, I'm going to oppose you. Uh, I'm not, I don't like you. Uh, I, I don't have any respect for you. Uh, and God calls that a spirit of rebellion. Uh, stubbornness is as an uh, uh, iniquity and an idolatry uh, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. Uh, he has also rejected thee from being king. Uh, I don't ever want to be a person uh, that God rejects uh, from the next level of authority uh, because I cannot keep my mind stayed up on Jesus. Uh, it's simply stubbornness uh, to know to do good uh, and you don't do it anyway. Rejection to leaders whom God has given authority is rebellion. As quiet as it is kept, people act out and we act out in rebellious, not even realizing it because we're actually rebelling. And a lot of our blessings, uh, again, God reigns on the just and the unjust, but there are some spiritual blessings like peace in our mind, like joy in our soul, like being able to, to endure life uh, like a good soldier with the peace and the presence of God are being withheld from the children of God because of the act of rebellious. And God wants to bless us, but somewhere down the line, we have dropped the instruction manual on getting God to delight. It's called the little bitty foxes, hallelujah. It's called the little bitty attitudes and the little bitty idiosyncrasies and the little bitty things. The Bible says, hallelujah, that a little fox, hallelujah, have done this. And your behavior can help us or help you determine or discern whether it's rebellions or if you're still being tested and not ready or it's your time. The way you know you're rebelling is look at, we got to look at scripture and see what's going on within us rather than what's going on in somebody else. Remember, I told you rebellion is opposition against leadership, opposing, attacking a, a leadership. Look at scripture and see if we resist the authority of God. Look at scripture and see, are we in order with, word, with the word of God or are we rejecting the word of God? God told us to love and we got hate in our hearts. That's rebellious. He told us to forgive and we walk around with grudges in our inward part. That's rebellious. It's keeping us from the promised land. Yeah, we got provision along the way. But the Bible says again, he reigns on the just and the unjust. I don't want to be a person that God is reigning on me just because I'm, I, I have an opportunity to be reigned on. But I miss all the spiritual aspects of the covenant of peace and the covenant of blessings. I, the spiritual aspects. The Bible says uh, that I, we can have all spiritual blessings. Blessings fall in unlimited category. God was trying to take them into a place like the Garden of Eden where there was no want. It's not just limited to having money. Blessings come in a package called peace. Blessings come in a package called, hallelujah, having joy. Blessings come in a package called having good health. You may go through a temptation and a test where the trial of your faith may come up against you, but the blessings of the Lord will overtake you. And I don't know that we really understand the deadness of rebellion because we don't see rebellion as rebellion. We see, I think it's should be done this way. You're this way that opposes God or godly leadership is rebellious. Israel were insistent on going back to Israel, Egypt because it was what they knew and what when they were comfortable in is what they knew that it was hard to embrace something new. When you are comfortable with what you've always had, when you have been comfortable in what you've always known, it can be hard to embrace something new. And all they could see was what they saw. They could not see the newness of God. Tell somebody, don't rebel. Moses said, don't rebel and don't fear the people. This made them have an attitude to reject God. 
God's word forthcoming because the route that they were taking didn't look like where they were going to be. And again, church, we look at the wilderness that we're in and we will complain because it don't look like what God said. So we get stuck in a spirit of uh, of rebellion but tell somebody you don't have to rebel you don't have to come against what God has said because if you reject the word you reject his knowledge and he cannot allow you to retain in his knowledge but what he did the what the word of God did say is what authority says whatever God says the first time don't change his mind minister Crawford just brought it out what God had already said he had already established it hallelujah we're going to get to that in a moment the commentary I want to tell us said something that was so powerful powerful it says Israel's unbelief was revealed by their rebelliousness this was powerful because when God tells us something to refuse his word means we don't believe in the expected outcome whether good or bad that simply shows your unbelief either we didn't receive it in the original declaration that the promises were real on the other side remember he said originally i'm bringing you out of egypt and i'm bringing you into a land flowing with milk and honey i'm bringing you into the promised land i'm bringing you into a land so they have not arrived and they are in the middle of where they are but yet on their way to where they are going and somewhere in between there they start to un to to not believe you cannot let what you're going through cause you to unbelieve. Because again, an unbeliever can't receive anything from the hand of God. So not only does it show that they refused to believe in the expected outcome, whether good or bad. You know how we have these type of children. I have this type of child that no matter what I say, they have to see it their own way. And my mother used to tell me that fat meat is greasy. If you keep touching a hot stove, you will get burned. Hallelujah. Sometimes people have to see things for themselves. So Israel refused the word because they didn't expect believe in the expected outcome whether good or bad hallelujah the second instruction Moses told them was to fear not the people in the land fearing man insults the faith of what God can do this makes a statement that you have suppressed the power of God and exalted the power of the enemy your faith shall always combat your fear God told them do not fear fear puts dark clouds over our vision so you cannot see clearly you cannot walk uh, faithfully uh, you cannot get to your place clearly uh, when you have fear over your face uh, because fear is a dark aspect uh, of a vision from the enemy I remember sister Adams used to say it's false evidence appearing real it is there but it's not there it just looked like what it ain't uh, so you cannot operate uh, in the spirit of fear because the devil will show you false stuff uh, he will show you fake friends uh, he will show you fake love uh, he he will show you fake opinion, uh, fake uh, suggestions and fake wisdom. So Joshua said, Caleb said, don't fear the people of the land. I know they there, but walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, I know your opposition is in there with you, but go on and go in the room anyway. Uh, I know they don't want to see you make it because uh, remember there were some Hizites, some Jebusites, uh, some Amorites. Uh, there were all types of spirits uh, go in the middle of what God was trying to take Israel you're going to have people, hallelujah, that have uh, opposite opposing spirits uh, that come against you uh, to try to make you stop uh, on your way to the promised land. But you cannot reject the word of God. You know that if God before you, who can be against you? Uh, you got to get to where God has told you uh, in spite of uh, the issues that are around you. Uh, do not fear. The Bible talks about a uh, man of God, David. Uh, we talk about him as just a ruddy boy uh, that was standing in front of a strong Goliath. Uh, what made him say 
say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He knew that the Lord was with him. And if God before him, who can be against him? You don't have to fear man. When you got God on your side, the, oh, the Bible says, if God before me, who can be against me? The only thing we need to fear is the Lord. When you fear God, it will remove rebellion. Fear his name to respect his name. You know, we alter our relationships based on who we respect. But if you respect the name of God, right? If we reverence the name of God, right? There can be no place for rebellion. Rebellion is simply opposing authority. And God says in the verse 11 that he stood up in the tabernacle and he spoke against, hallelujah, every Israelite that opposed his authority. Because when you reject the word, the word will reject you. I don't want him to reject my generation. It may not come today, but it can show up on tomorrow. You got to go with Jesus. Come all fear, through all shame, through all hurt, through all pain. Rebellion will make you do some crazy stuff. Instead of them hearing the righteousness, instead of them hearing Joshua and Caleb in their ear, their plea for them. Come on, y'all. God got this land. All we got to do is delight, get him to delight in us. That means all we got to do is retain his word. What did he say? Do good unto them that do good, do evil unto you. All you got to do is to retain his word. When you hurt and you broken, give him a worship. All you got to do is retain his word. Overcome evil with good. All we got to do is retain his word. First Chronicles 16 and 22. They came up against the leaders. Jesus, the Lord says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. So judgment comes against them because they come up against the leaders. Verse 11, he says, how long will this people provoke me? The demon of rebellion will let you see things your way, but won't show you God is listening and watching everything we do and say. He says, how long will ye provoke me? How long will ye provoke me? The Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. Remember, he had already spoken his word, and I'm taking you to this promised land. We can have a hunger for more, but we can heavily bound, be bound to our own vision, and it will keep us from the promised land. To get God to delight in you, all we have to do is follow God's instructions. Don't reject his word. He tells us to pray, repent, and to turn from our wicked ways. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He came 42 generations asking us not to rebel.